<laughs> hey, Sadi, uh, happy new year to you. Uh, we saw that um, you played a pretty big role in recruiting Kobe Bufkin, specifically between the B-line to Howard transition. What do you kind of see from him on the recruiting trail and how's that kind of coming to fruition this year in his sophomore season? Well, happy new year to you and, and everybody on the, on the call today. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Kobe has made or is in the process of making that that typical year one to year two jump uh, that you would typically see uh, with guys making that 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 progress. Um, you know, he had a great summer in terms of, of getting his body together. Uh, but more importantly, uh, he's become a real student of the game. Uh, and I think because of that, you see uh, the success, the early, some of the early successes that he's having, you know, thus far in the season. And, you know, obviously he still has a long way to go in his development, uh, but uh, we're pleased with the, the, um, uh, with the process that he's on right now. Hey, Saudi, I want to touch on a couple other two-year guys, uh, Isaiah Barnes and Will Cheddar. They both have seen first half minute at times this season, and they have the last two games against Central and, and Maryland, I guess. Just what have you thought about their minutes and what have they brought out on the floor? You know, I, I think that both Isaiah and Will have given us the spark that we needed, uh, even in the limited minutes that they've had. Uh, you know, coach is really big on, you know, uh, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And, you know, regardless if you're playing five minutes a game or 35 minutes a game, you know, the expectation is that you're dialed into what we're trying to get accomplished out on the floor. So, you know, the, the, the point of the matter is make your minutes count. And I think that Zay and Will have done a pretty good job uh, in this early part of the season, trying to make every minute that they're on the floor count. And ha have these past two matchups, has it been opponent-based and more fluid, or is it more of a case that they're earning this playing time and they're kind of earning that spot in the rotation? You know, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, again, like they're, you know, when you're coming off the bench, uh, you know, part of your job is to change the tempo of the game with your energy, Right. Like you've had opportunity to sit and watch the game flow. Uh, and if we're if we're playing well, you know, you want to be able to maintain that. And if for some reason we're not playing well, uh, you have had the benefit of being able to sit there and watch kind of why we aren't playing well. And hopefully when 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 your opportunity comes, um, you know, you kind of put those things into action to try to, you know, jumpstart us again. So. Uh, I think that they've just really been dialed in, you know, to our scouting reports, what we've been trying to get accomplished going into games. And then, um, you know, when they get on the floor, um, you know, you, you just kind of say, you just play to exhaustion, you know, you're not going to play 30 minutes a game. So go balls to the wall. And then, you know, when you get tired, tap out and, and we'll get the next guy in there. And, and they've been doing that for us. And obviously we didn't get to see a lot of them last year because they're on the scout team. Um, right. I, can you just speak to the strides they've made, you know, over this past year? Yeah, I think, you know, they've been they've been committed to the process. When you're on the scout team, you have the benefit of learning a bunch of different um, offenses in a short amount of time. So typically with guys, it helps. It actually helps speed up their learning curve um, because they see a variety of, of ways of playing. And so then when we get to the games, they have a different lens most of the time in terms of what what's coming next, how we should be playing it. And so the, the hope is that now when they get their opportunity to uh, impact the game on the floor, that they still hold on to some of those qualities in terms of of how they see the game. And um, again, um, it's, it's really just about everybody being ready when their number is called. Hey, Sadi. Happy New Year. Uh, I wasn't at the last couple of games uh, with football. I guess, could you kind of help explain how, you know, it, this kind of the up and, ups and downs of this team, losing, you know, at home to Central Michigan and then beating a Big Ten team by, you know, whatever it was, 30 plus points. Yeah. You know, you know. You know we, we've talked a lot lately about just respecting the game, you know, um, the way that we approach our preparation the way that we approach with our effort 
and, and intensity and, and mindset going into every game has to be at an elite level, all right? Because, I mean, let's face it, this, this game and this conference certainly can be unforgiving if you just show up and try to go through the motions. And I'm not saying that that was what we were doing, but, um, you know, as you can see across the board throughout the league, there's no gimmies. There's no gimmies in this league. And you got to show up every freaking night prepared to battle uh, until the end. And, um, you know, hopefully um, what we saw the other night is more the norm for us as we move forward. Uh, but, you know, the Big Ten is the Big Ten. And, um, you know, we, 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 I think, you know, when you have, when you have two games like that, it's very clear to the players what the standards should be right and and it's i think that they're easy they can recognize it better and we can all hold each other more accountable to that standard all right thanks thanks Sadi, um you know last game against maryland you guys held maryland to 13 points at the half played exceptionally defensively uh how have you seen this team improve defensively as the year has gone along yeah, I think it's just been a, a natural progression, you know, especially with with a, a lot of new faces, you know, trying to really understand what we're doing and then at the level that's required for it to be done on a consistent basis. And, um, you know, that the other night was was fantastic, you know, from start to finish. And, you know, we even talked about it a little bit today, not just the the, the starting group set the tone but the rest of the team maintained it throughout, even up until the last minutes of the game, when you saw guys like Ian Burns and, and Cooper Smith and Jackson and, and Greg and those guys came into the game. They were as much focused and intentional about maintaining that standard as the first group was. And so if we have that mentality um, moving forward, then we give ourselves a chance to win games. Saudi, I, I wonder, uh, from a defensive standpoint, facing Penn State, uh, you guys are a little more traditional personnel-wise, big man and everything, and, and they're so small and, and five out and everything like that. Uh, what kind of challenge is that going to be uh, like for you guys, and what have you seen from them on film? I think Struz does a great job of, of, you know, trying to keep teams off balance, whether it's through their play call whether it's through their um, personnel that's out on the floor. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we have to be who we are, you know, and, and, and just stick to our principles and habits. Uh, they can really stretch the floor with their shooting um, and with their speed, but then they also have a really talented point guard and picket who can, he's just a jack of all trades, man. He can score, he can defend, he can pass, he can rebound. And so, uh, you know, we just got to really fly around, play with good length and and just make it challenging for them to uh, execute in the half court as well as in the full court, because they can really get out and run and, and, and be problematic uh, uh, in that state, in that mindset, too. But again, at the end of the day, uh, we got to be who we are because they got to turn around and guard us, too. Yeah, and speaking of uh, Penn State. They commit the fewest turnovers uh, per game in the country so far, and, and your team is committing the second fewest in the country. So how have you guys been so successful in uh, maintaining ball possession, and how do you plan to maybe get a couple extra turnovers against Penn State? Well, uh, valuing the ball is, is, is so important, you know, um, and I think the guys have done a good job of understanding the whys, the why of what we're trying to get accomplished on the offensive end and you know where the ball should be who should have it at the right time uh to give ourselves the best opportunity to score i mean you, you want you want attempts you want attempts at the rim um to put points on the board but the ball has to move right the ball can't stick uh and, and allow your offense to be stagnant so you know coach Jawan does a really good job of, of and our team does a really good job of just really staying um focus on the details of, of our offense. Um, and in terms of trying to, you know, get them to turn the ball over again, like we, we have to defend, 
Like we have to, whether, and if steals come, great. If not, you know, we definitely have to be there to contest shots. You know, they're a, a really good shooting team. We got to contest shots. You know, they're making 11 threes a game. So that means there's going to be a lot of long rebounds. Um, and so we got to do a, a even better job, right, of putting putting body on body and boxing out and getting these long rebounds before we get out and transition and go ourselves. You talk, hi, Saudi. You, you talk about those defensive rebounds. Was that maybe one of the biggest areas of improvement you saw between that that Central Michigan game and, and Maryland? It seemed like you guys were getting to the to the glass better. Is that something that was emphasized during that time, or, or what you, you think saying? we gave up seventeen of them against Central Michigan? <laughs> so, you know, that definitely was one of the points of emphasis uh, after the Central Michigan game. But you know, like let's let's we got to own it. Like that's been kind of an issue for us all season and um you know now that we're into league play um you you can't give your opponents extra possessions and you know rebounding is as much uh is as much attitude and effort and will as it is technique right and so um you know we we got after it those couple of days in practice and that was a huge area of emphasis for us and you know, the way that Penn State shoots the ball, we, we can't afford to give them any extra possessions. All right, and quickly, if I could follow up, I know up the road in East Lansing, they've told stories about putting the, the football pads on and those sorts of things for rebounding drills. I wonder, um, did you guys maybe not do that, but what what did this emphasis look like these last few days? Well, I mean, I don't know about football pads, but, you know, humans work just as well as, you know, as, as, as football pads. But it's, it's, a, it's a mindset. It's a mentality, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's um, what you've been doing pretty much all of your life. And now it's just, do you have the discipline to check to make sure your guy isn't running in, to put a body on them and wedge them? you know, out of bounds so that if you can't get it, then your teammate gets it. But uh, this 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 idea of just allowing people to, you know, get double digit offensive rebounds on us like that's that's we had to take ownership of that. And I think our guys responded, you know, pretty well uh, the other night. Does anybody have anything else for coach? Yeah, one one more on the defense, if I could, Sadia. Yeah. There a lot of coaches in the past have mentioned, you know, kind of the young players transition into the college game. The hardest learning curve is kind of on the defensive end. What what makes that so difficult? And and what do you guys do to when you have a young team to make sure that guys are are ready to go come conference play? Honestly, I think a, a lot of it has to do with the the new level of accountability. Right. Because for a lot of these guys, they come in, they come from high school and they just don't have the personnel to, um, you know, really hold guys accountable. So if a guy, if he's your best player on the team and, you know, he's not boxing out or he's just kind of giving half effort, well, who are you going to put in behind him? Right. Well, now you make that transition to college. Well, there's probably two or three guys that can play your position. Right. So if you can't do it, the next man will. And, you know, the bench is the greatest teacher sometime. But at the same time, um, you know, learning new terminology, the speed of the game, the athleticism of the game, the physicality of the game, that all factors in, too. So that's why, you know, tons and tons of film watching in addition to drills and, you know, um, uh, their teammates, you know, holding them accountable because it, it comes from us all the time as, as coaches. But now when your teammates see it and they're the ones demanding more of you, you know, just like anything else in life, you don't want to let your brothers down. So like step up, step up and, and, and make the critical plays. And, you know, coach, since day one is stress, you know, we want two way players around here. And, um, you know, I think once guys really embrace that two way mindset, that's where you really start to see, you know, the shift in um, uh, their attitude toward playing on both sides of the ball. Anything else for coach? All right, Saudi, we really appreciate